Hey there, this is Mark. In this video, we'll take a look at how to add a glow to the top of the lamp post, as well as modifying the way the beam is shown. So if I zoom into the lamp post over here, and I can turn it on and off in the node view to make sure, I can see that everything is one piece. And what I'd actually like to do is I would like to have these glowing parts just kind of bloom a little more and be a little brighter. In order to do that, I need a mat to determine those areas. So what I'll first do is I'll create a new drawing, and we can do that by hitting Control R on our keyboard if you're on PC or Command R on a Mac. And I'm going to type in the name of my mat, and I'll call this Glow Mat. Press Add and Close. I'm going to drag this to the left side, and then I'll drag in the peg to make sure that it's connected to the exact same spots as my BG. If my BG moves, I want this Glow Mat to follow it along. Now I'll drop down from this and connect it to the main composite for that background. What we're going to use to draw the mat is a polyline tool. So if we look down here, we have our line tool and a little white arrow so we know there's more tools. If we click and hold, we can then select down to polyline. Next in my tool properties, I can see the options for that line. I'll just scroll down over here and I'll take a look at these two options. So this one says autofill, which means that if I finish off my shape, it will automatically fill it with a color. And this one says trim the extra lines, which means that if I ever go beyond the edges of my own shape, it'll get rid of the extra stranding lines. So we'll turn these both on. And then I'll go to my color, and I want to have a palette in here that I can paint with. So what I'll do is I'll create a new palette and I'll call this comp. Press OK. And Down here we have our new palette. I always like to leave the default as is and I'll create a new swatch and we'll call that matte. Doesn't matter what color you make it, I leave it black. Just for fun let's make another one called uh, just red. And we'll double click the swatch to change the color and just simply pick a red. So now we have two colors. And if we see we have the polyline tool, we also have these options here where we can choose whether we paint uh, with fill the same color as the pencil line or as the brush. So I know that I want my fill to be, say, black. I'll make sure that this is unchecked. And then I'll make my pencil red and my brush red. So that looks interesting enough. Then I'll go up here and I'll start to draw. So we'll go back to our node view, make sure that we have our glow mat selected, that we're on frame one, and then we can click the shape. And if you'd like to do a curve, you can click and drag, which will get you the tangents. Simple click just has no tangents, so it's going to be a sharp edge. And then we can click and drag again, click. And what we want to do is go beyond the edge of our line. Uh, make sure you're not clicking up here because you're not closing down the shape, but click beyond the line so that you can close the shape up. When you're done your shape you can hit control click and what that'll do is we'll assume you've finished the line which will chop it off and now we can see the red line and the black fill. If you've made a mistake don't worry about it we're going to go and tidy them up later with the white arrow. So next I'll start clicking again and again go beyond my line and control click to finish off my shape. Do that with this one. Control click and once more over here. Okay, now that we have our four shapes, we're going to want to get rid of this red line because it's extra information that's going beyond what I'm looking for. So I'll just switch to my drawing view and if you don't see anything in here, you can either hit Shift M to reset your view or you can start moving around or scrolling out to uh, zoom out and you will eventually find it. Using my uh, select tool, and I'll go back up here, I like to be in marquee mode when I'm selecting my lines which allows me to select the entire line. So I'll do that and hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of them. Now I have single shapes which are easier to manage. And in here, we can see the results we have. So here's where you could do your tidying. You can select your white arrow. Uh, since we've painted on the line art, make sure that's what we have selected here. Otherwise, we won't be selecting our art. 
and then you can simply click and drag your points until you're satisfied with the way that your shape looks. So this is good enough because it's loose and it's basically just going to be a mat to select the colors behind it. So we can see we have this basic shape. I'm going to disconnect this now so we look back at our original lamppost. And what I want to do is I want to wire this lamppost again but only using this shape. So what I'll do is I'll go to my note library. I'll find a cutter and we can find this in our favorites if we go up here, cutter. And I don't want to cut it with the shape, I want to isolate it. So I'm going to reverse this to a reverse cutter. You can either do it by double clicking that icon or you can also just make sure that it's checked in the layer properties. Next I'll drag this in. I'll drag my shape in and then I can drag that to the top of the composite. If we want to see the results of what we have, we can simply add a display and you have a display in your favorites or the shortcut is Control Y in PC or Command Y on a Macintosh. So now I'll drag this down. It's called Display 1 and to see it I switch down to Display 1. So now you can see that we've isolated the interior of the lamppost to our global uh, glow mat shape. Let's go back to our regular display. And the last thing we want to do here before we make it glow is go back to our timeline, select the glow mat, and then to find it in the timeline, simply go to the timeline and hit O, and that'll go straight to it. And we can see that we only have it on the single frame here. What we want is to make sure that it lasts the entire time. So I'll go to the very end and I'll extend the exposure, which is F5, or you can right click and extend the exposure. Next thing we want to do is add a little glow module. So I'll go down to my filters over here and I can either find it in here or I can simply type it in and drag that in. So if we simply look at our OpenGL now, we can see something has affected it and we can render that and it, it's nice, but it's kind of just a white and harsh edge. So what I want to do is click the layer properties and we're going to make this the use source color checked on. And what that does is it basically says, okay, whatever color you've given me, which in this case is the actual gradient of the lamppost, you're going to use to make that glow. So click that and you can't really see much of a change until we add radius. And then we're going to make this glow, uh, say a five. So now we have the exact colors glowing by themselves and blurring out a little bit. So to create a bloom and that looks really nice. So the next step we want to do is simply just kind of feather off this uh, hard beam. So we're going to go back up here and try to find our beam. And there you have it. So this is the layer we want to change. And what I'd like to do is just blur it a tiny bit. So I'll find a blur. Uh, if I go to my filter, I have all my blurs up here. And I'll select the blur radial this time. Attach that over here and I'll go and make this a radius of 1. Now we see that we have a slightly more feathered blur. Uh, it still trails off nicely. Looks fairly nice and uh, we're ready for our next step in the next video.